Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bombast. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed and now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome in to another episode of the Penny Bloom Podcast. It is I, Colton Robertson, and today I am joined by Joseph George. What's up, homie? Oh, what up, what up? Always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it is always a pleasure to have you. Today, we continue our 52-year journey through film. Uh, for those who are joining us for the first time, every Friday this entire year, We've been doing, we've been covering at least one movie per week. Uh, the first, first day of 2022, we covered a movie from 1970. And every Friday after that, we've covered a movie from the succeeding year, 71, 72, all the way through the 70s, all the way through the 80s, all the way through the 90s, all the way through the aughts. And now we're in the 2010s. We've done 2010, 11, and 12. It is 2013 this week, and we are covering the Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, now, this is a this is a this is an interesting one because it's one that I think this is my fifth or sixth watch mm. of this movie. I watched this movie many times over the course of the last seven years. My perception of it evolving greatly over the course of those uh, seven years. You know, being a a little bit more intelligent. Mm. Uh, can, you know, having, having critical thought during this movie yeah. is, is something that is very important. Uh, but this was a first viewing for you, correct? Yeah. I've seen bits and pieces of it. Like, obviously, the, the, like, iconic scenes. I'm not fucking leaving and the, <laughs> the Matthew even... McConaughey, uh, mm. you know, um, but I mean, mm. like, yeah, really, other than that, like, uh, it's only been, out mm. yeah. in, like, <laughs> there was, like, I watched a like a, a review on the movie, and it ended up being like a satirical review, and it said that Matthew McConaughey was like this dark wizard, and that was his spell <laughs> that he cast on people to like be corrupted into the Wall Street, you know, like business. That's fair. And then That's and then when Jordan when Jordan does it to everybody in the office, he gets ev- he does everyone, yeah, everyone's or, or whatever. But um, yeah, other than that, like I've only seen like some TikTok clips of like the real Jordan Belfort, like explaining like, parts Oh, and of the he movie does and pop like up that. in this movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which, which was kind of, which was funny. introducing himself but, as a legend. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. How, how Jordan Belfort of him to do so. Yeah. Um, very, very, uh, very spot on, but uh, let's hmm. lay the groundwork for the people. This is the Wolf of wall street. It was released on here. Let me find it for you. Released on Christmas 2013, December 25th, 2013. Uh, it was written by Terrence Winter, based off a book by Jordan Belfort and directed by Martin Scorsese. Mm. Uh, and this might be might be a piping hot take. Mm. I I love Goodfellas with all my heart. I think it's a great fucking movie. And since we recorded that, you know, rest in peace, Ray Liotta, he sadly passed away uh, amidst amidst that time. Uh, I think this might be my favorite Martin Scorsese movie. Okay. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, I mean, a, a Taxi Driver. I mean, it's, I like it and all, but it's it, in the discussion, at least for me, it was Goodfellas in this was like. Was kind of the one that I was comparing. Like, is it better than Goodfellas? Because I'm like, ah, I enjoy this more than Taxi Driver. Oh, I de- like um, Taxi Driver. Like, for me, no longer in the conversation when it comes to <laughs> Scorsese movies. Like, I, I get why it's considered a classic and stuff, uh, especially for the time period it came. Seventy six feels very mm-hmm. fitting for a movie like this. But man, I really enjoy The Wolf of Wall Street, you know. And I don't think, uh, like, if you make Goodfellas three hours. Maybe I like Goodfellas more. 
You know, there was like there's just uh, something stylistically with Martin Scorsese here that giving him room to breathe and letting him run with a fucking movie for so goddamn long uh, mm. works. And, uh, yeah, and th- I will say that usually when I watch a Leo movie, um, y- you can't really not look at him and see Leonardo DiCaprio. Right. But like this time, like he sinks he really, that shit, yeah, man. he really grasped the character really well. And like, honestly, like Jonah Hill kind of did that too, to a, like a little bit of a lesser degree than Leo, I think. But like, like usually when you see Jonah Hill, you're like, oh, like he, he has his mannerisms. He's going to do his Jonah Hill thing. But this like, is probably Jonah Hill's best work of like, all yeah. time. Like, and, uh, like, which is, which is awesome. Oh, dude, um, the, like the just ensemble cast here with Leonardo DiCaprio. Like, this is part of why, you know, like I love when mm-hmm. I watch Goodfellas that I'm seeing Bob De Niro and Joe Pesci and Ray Liotta and shit. But as someone born in the year 2000, mm-hmm. uh, it makes it, it, it fulfills my sensibilities a little more to see Leo, Jonah Hill, Margot Robbie, Matthew McConaughey, Kyle Chandler, Rob Reiner, John Bernthal, John Bernthal. What the Punishers in this bitch? John Favreau, uh, Kristen Milioti, who I just absolutely fucking love. Kenneth Choi, like an insane cast, like mm. just, just just absurd. Yeah, running through the cast kind of reminded me how much more there is to this movie. Like uh, J- Kristen, what Milioti, mm-hmm. Mil- Milioti, like her role. Like I kind of like, I don't know. I just forgot about because there was so much movie after like she was gone oh yeah yeah and like like, what's crazy though is that her role is integral in showing us jordan's fall Mm. like uh uh, from fall from great like uh as far they had, as they had such a good thing going, they yeah, did. He was like, like yeah. he, was a, he shows up his first day on Wall Street. He's kind of a sweetheart. He's kind of, like mm. he's a little, he's low key. He's like, you know what, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I would, I would love to do that. Yes, sir. I'm worth nothing. Whatever. Da, 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 da. Mm. Uh, and he's like, you know, Matthew McConaughey is telling him two keys. You know, it's uh, it's uh, <laughs> hookers and mm. blow. And yeah. uh, and uh, I was just like, and he's like, oh, I have a wife. I have a wife. You know, like that. Not for me. I have a wife. And like, goddamn, man, that's like, it's one of the, probably the hardest scene to watch, probably the second hardest scene to watch. There's one at the end that's ah, yeah, ooh, hard to watch. Yeah, but, I did uh, not know that was in the movie at all. No, yeah, uh, but one of the scenes that's my favorite in this movie is when he pulls back up to the the hotel with Margot Robbie in the back of the limo. And he's, mm. he's been doing cocaine off her, off her breasts and stuff. And then, uh, she, Chris Milioti swings open the door and goes, you motherfucker, like <laughs> drags mm. him out of the limo. Yeah. Pulls him out of the limo. Shuts like, the fucking door, tells it to get going and is like, uh, oh, she kills that scene. And like, uh, I'd like to, I'd like to throw out my first, uh, mm. my first nominee. I think this is a supporting actress nod out of Kristen Milioti for uh, her role. As, uh, Teresa, oh, Teresa Petrillo. Teresa Petrillo. Mm hmm. <laughs> Very, uh, awesome. I fucking, lo- I love that scene. Whenever she's like, uh, how could you do this to me? I don't even recognize you anymore. It's like you're a completely different person. It, like, we've seen that scene done a number of times, but she was able to anchor it in a way that just made me, like, feel it, you know, like it really was sad. And the way, he- Leo looked like she goes, do you love her? Mm. And he's like, he just didn't he couldn't well, because, respond. Very important. The silence was his answer. Oh know? yeah. And like, like, here's my thing is that I don't think the silence is a yes. The silence mm-hmm. is a, Oh, probably not, but I don't want to be with you anymore. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Like, yeah, he's like, I just, this girl's just really, really hot. Yeah, if I'm likes, being honest, it's just, oh, wow. If I'm being honest, no, I don't love her, but I'm not going to keep doing this with you. And he was like, I was heartbroken. Mm-hmm. Three days later, I filed for divorce and had Naomi move into true. the apartment. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, like true. I was like, all right, dick. Like, okay, guy. Like, oh. And that's that's one of the important things about this movie for me is that, like, while there are certainly scenes that glorify the lifestyle he is living, mm. uh. He's the worst. He's a scumbag. Uh, and as are everybody around him, like in Scorsese does his thing where he lets this, the characters just kind of talk, you know, like how, like, it's like maybe not an important conversation's happening, 
Mm. But it lets you know who the characters are, and it's like uh, you're getting to know them a little bit. And whenever they had those moments, it was just even more deeply ingrained in us. Like, this dude sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, uh, I mean, even that, that like, moment comes back like flipped around on him whenever he's about to go to jail. And then, you know, Naomi's like, no, I, I want a divorce. And he's yeah. like, Oh, that's, that's so convenient for you. You know, right. Whenever I'm going to jail, blah, blah, blah. But like, he did the same exact thing. Like yes, he did same exact thing. Um, which, ah, man, I, wow. I didn't even put like those two together at all. Oh, yeah, one. man. Like, he's a, uh, and that's, what's uh that's, what's interesting is like, I, it is so hard to create a movie that is based around a real person that uh, is fulfilling story-wise. You know, like someone has to have lived a hell of a life for you to be able to base it off a real-life person and go, this was a good movie. Mm-hmm. Narratively, uh, uh, th- thematically, like it, it all just worked. And obviously I'm sure there's plenty of dramatization at points, but I've heard this is pretty, pretty spot on. Mm. Like really? as far as what the, what the life of Jordan Belfort was like for a, for a span of time. Like when, like the domestic, I mean, like literally him slapping his wife and punching her in the gut. Like, was mm-hmm. that like, he's being very honest. Like if he's like, yeah. Oh I, yeah. I like, I wife. think, uh, like, yeah, I think it was, I think it was like a, uh, and you know I I can't speak to what Jordan Belfort's intentions were mm. with his book or anything, but I can I can say it was pretty, like uh, that's part of what makes me go, yeah, this isn't a glorification, mm. you know, like it's like it's being really honest about how terrible this dude was, uh, like just a complete piece of shit, you know, like there the, and there was like no doubt about it, um. It it didn't matter what he had, didn't matter who he had. He wanted more. He wanted better. Uh, he was greedy as all shit, and that's kind of what it's all centered around, you know. Uh, is the greed that this that this sort of thing can bring you to? Because uh, you know, like people before coming in this movie, one of the things you had your concerns about was like the typical crowd who enjoys this movie and idolizes Jordan Belfort in a way. And now that you've seen it and you've come out the other side, can you see how those people are completely fucking idiotic? Yeah, they missed the point of the movie. Yeah. Like, it's like they watched the first two and a half hours and then turned it off. Or like the first two hours and turned it off, kind of. Fuck, like, Like, watched a montage uh, of the party moments and then, like, just tuned out for the rest of it. And I mean, also that that's kind of like probably the the point of the last scene is that um, people idolize Jordan Belfort. Like, there's definitely like he has like a very big cult following. Like in real life, like people like still follow this man. Um, and and I think that's part of like the last shot as well is like we want to be like Jordan. You know, like on surface level thought, we're like, yeah, I want all this money. I want a yacht. I want you know the super big house. I want a helicopter. Like, I want to like, have sex yeah. with my wife on a yeah. bed of money. Just like, yeah, like a... <laughs> um, God damn. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, on, on first thought, all, all those things are nice, you know, but, but you gotta, you gotta see what he did to get there. You know, like I, I never, um, like uh, knowing this movie, I didn't know that it was like penny stocks. And that he was like just ripping people off. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't know that he was selling shit to people and literally just taking money from people who like didn't have it. And then I guess they made it better whenever he's like, oh, here's this script. Now do it to the rich people. Um, but I feel like they were still doing it to anyone and everyone. Like the yeah, whole no, time. the thing is, is that like, uh, they called him a twisted Robin Hood. Mm. And like that's not even fucking close. Yeah. Like uh he's not a twisted Robin Hood. He is just taking yeah. like and you know it's it makes sense that there is a whole crowd of people that would have no issue with what he did. That would go, "Oh yeah, what a badass. He's fucking over poor people." You know like uh and like the whole narrative where he's like a uh, 
you don't want to you don't want to work here go work at fucking mcdonald's mm. you know like mm-hmm. that that whole shit it's like god damn like just a just a rhetoric that is classist and uh and just too like he's too much of a dick i can't fathom watching this movie and going god i really love jordan belford mm. what a guy yeah. Stand up, man. I mean, like, it would be nice if, uh, you know, I could make half a million dollars on one phone call, you mm-hmm. know, off one rich guy, or like, or I could get fifty k from some poor person. You now, know, if he was doing nothing fake, but you know, fucking yeah, over the like, rich, fuck it, man. Um, okay, but like, yeah, well, I don't know, like, and that's just kind of what Wall Street is. I mean, it's just like greedy, 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 like, it, it, like. And I don't know, he even I, says it in the movie, like, no one truly knows unless you're Warren Buffett or the the top 1%, you know, that that basically fix the stock market for themselves anyways. So it's yeah, like, like Mark Hanna, Matthew McConaughey's character telling him at the beginning, you know, like, uh, no one fucking it's, knows. It's intangible. It's not real. It doesn't exist. <laughs> he was going off right there. It's the not, analogy oh, he was. How saying. about the fact that this oh man has God. two scenes in this movie and mm. is far and away one of the best parts of it? Like, uh. His his like brief stint in this movie, like oh. I don't like. Do we have another movie where Leonardo DiCaprio and Matthew McConaughey act across from one another, or is it just this one or two scenes? Like, uh, yeah, which he's kind of nuts. Uh, but that whole thing where he's like, it's it's intangible, it's not real, it doesn't exist. Uh, he's like, so what we do, we 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 never make it real. You know, mm. uh, as soon as they want to cash out, we you, you get another bright idea. You got another mm-hmm. thing that's on, just came across your desk. It's perfect. He, and he will reinvest his earnings and more. And they always do because they're addicted. And it's mm-hmm. like, a, God damn, what a dick. He's like, you know what? While they're, while they keep putting that money in here, we just cash in with commission, baby. God damn. Yeah. 1% though. He was making 1% in, and made 70K. No, no, no. That, no, that's, I guess when he, when he transferred over to the, the penny stocks. Uh, was when he made seventy k yeah. in that one month, but I mean he was still making good money. Like yeah, he was that. making that was decent money. It was funny, you know. We right? opened that. We opened the movie with him mm-hmm. being like, uh, "I made fifty one point whatever million dollars last year," and it really pissed me off because it was just mm-hmm. shy of a million a week, and it was like, uh, "God damn, fuck you!" And then we get to the we get to the brokerage where he's working as the the guy just making the calls, and he's like. Listen, guy, I made three hundred thousand dollars last year. The guy I'm working for made over a million, and you're like, oh, <laughs> like, uh, oh, these guys don't even know. Like, mm-hmm. they've got it good. Uh, they don't even know what Jordan Belfort's about to do to the fucking stock market, though. That, that is kind of nuts. That like this, this really happened. Mm-hmm. Like, this was not like a like he just found a loophole. Like, not even really a loophole. He just scammed people. Mm -hmm. Like, straight up. Like, he, like, just straight up scammed people, made it look like a legitimate business, had so many employees doing this constantly. And, like, it's, like, insane that this movie is not just fiction and, like, made up. Like, this, like, 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 it's, I don't know. Um, Well, and it's insane that, like, our stock market is, like, integral to our economy. mm. When it is so clearly manipulated by those who can manipulate it. Mm -hmm. And like we even saw it last, like what was at the end of last year, the beginning of this year when like uh, the Reddit stocks thing happened where it was like everyone. Uh, Wall Street bets. Yes. Yeah. Like that was uh, AMC and GameStop to the moon. To the moon. Yeah. Yeah, You know, like uh, (laughs) a system so easily manipulated like. Not not even just by the rich, as we saw. Once once people are organized yeah. and can attack it in a certain way, like kind of yeah, that's kind of nuts. That this was the first time that like the the population had control over the market for a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, like the top one percent, they do it every day. They don't mm-hmm. get like they don't, we, you know. And since it's the government, doesn't get, yeah, the government doesn't give a fuck about that. But like right when the people had just the smallest ounce of control. There were Regulations, like, everything was just like, nope, never mind. Nope. Uh, shut down Robin Hood. Shut down this. <laughs> shut down that. And it's like, what? Like it couldn't. Like, it couldn't have been more clear at that moment what the fuck the stock market was for. And it was like, 
All right, guys. So every time from now on, anytime you're like, oh, you want to get out of poverty, just go ahead and move your money into the stock market. Like, fuck mm-hmm. you. Fuck you, you dumb mm-hmm. motherfucker. I hate you. And it kind of goes – this is kind of um, – because I've, I've, I don't know, I've just been chilling in my room, um, kind of quarantining right now, just mm. uh, in case this test comes back positive. But it's given me a lot of time to watch stuff, and I've s- resumed my watch of the boys. Um, I need to, on, I need to on get Prime. on season three. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm on, I'm almost, or I just finished season two. I'm like on season three now. I wanted to watch season two again because I like, I started the first episode of season three, and I was like, whoa, I hey, need. And I've watched that show like, once. Yeah. And it was like t- when season two came out, so like yeah. I'll have to I'll have to catch up, like I'll have to rewatch before I watch season mm-hmm. three, I think. But uh, but uh, but like it it kind of parallels really well there, like the, all these problems that the heroes were having, blah blah blah. But then like then they fucked with the money, and like A Train like so, like has a line where he's like, "You don't fuck with the money, you know? Like mm-hmm. all the problems we had, whatever there was surface level, like they don't give a fuck like at all. But like then you fucked with the money, and like oh, we're done, like we're done for, yeah. and like." It's, I mean, that's, that's like an extreme case where there's superheroes and a company controlling them, but no, right, whatever. Yeah, but, but like, I mean, the government and the stock market's not far, you know, far off or whatever. And well, I mean, just know, in terms but, of the, the manipulation of the people's mm-hmm. money, you know, like, it's just kind of like, uh, they're fucking over people. And that's like, that's like the bottom line. But, uh, one of, one of the highlights for this movie for me is Jonah Hill's Donnie Azoff. Uh, mm-hmm. one of the, one of Jonah Hill's best roles of all time, if not his best role, uh, and just another complete scumbag. This one's super uh, bad. Yeah, but this one's obviously like obviously more critically probably. <laughs> uh, just just love super bad. There's a show on Netflix called Maniac that he's in that's fucking great, and it's another mm-hmm. more dramatic type role that he does really really good in. But uh, I I still think this takes the cake. But that first scene when he shows up, he's like, "You show me a." You show me a pay stub for seventy thousand dollars. I'll walk out of here. I'll quit. My, I'll quit my job right now, and I work for you. And he was like, and he did. He quit his job. Right I thought it was kind of nuts. I didn't know him. I just met the guy. Uh, I was like, oh man, what what a great way to set the tone for the character. And then the next, like the, that scene where they're sitting down at the diner, and he's like, uh, ah man, I hear things. You know, I hear things. I uh, rumors spread. You know, I don't want to yeah. give him any. I don't want to give him any. He's like, no. What'd you hear? What'd you hear? And he's like. Uh, there's some shit about you and your cousin. I don't know. I was, and he's like, he's like, ah, that, that shit. Ah, yeah, yeah. He's like, uh, and you know, Jordan, Jordan Belfort's kind of nagging him. Like, uh, he's not like, he doesn't go there initially. He's like, so I'm gonna give you the opportunity to tell me mm. before I say anything. And then like, after waiting a couple seconds, he goes, <laughs> nah, just that like you married your cousin or some shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I married my cousin. Mm. But uh, and then but, he goes on like the whole spiel, blah blah blah, and, and then he's like, not, not like a, not like man. a first cousin, right? He's like, no, yeah. no, 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 like uh, like her father mm. <laughs> is my mom's brother. <laughs> he just kept going on and on and on and on, and like he <laughs> joked about one part, but then Jordan thought that he was joking about the whole thing. You know, he's like, no, you're fucking with me. He goes, yeah, no, I'm fucking with you. Like, and he's like, oh, okay, Whew. he's not actually like with this guy. But then no, he like, then he was like, no, I was only lying about that last little part yeah. or whatever. And it was like, oh, dude, I don't know. Like, it was pretty, like, this was pretty funny. You know, even like with all the, the greed and all of, like just the blatant, like things that are wrong going on. Oh, um, yeah. And like, that's the thing though, is that they are definitely like, uh, there's, like overwhelming homophobia, racism, just like all, like all this macho like white man behavior, mm. uh, rich white man behavior that uh this debauchery that he gets into at all turn all all turns every single turn he takes leads to more debauchery, save mm. for maybe a couple towards the end uh, when he had no choice, but uh. Another one of my favorite scenes in this movie is on the yacht with uh, the agent, and he's uh-huh. like, uh, he like uh, low key lets him know, like, uh, you know, I do that for anybody, you know, I do that for anybody <laughs> under the right circumstances, you know. Uh, you got a problem? You come to me. And then the way the rest of that whole thing unfolds, where they're being <laughs> like, they're being all passive aggressive and like all smiles and stuff, but they're saying, so, "I think you just tried to bribe a federal official," and he's like, "No, no, I didn't." It says that there must be an exact dollar <laughs> amount, and like, uh, 
Mm-hmm. He's like, how about you get the fuck off my boat, okay? Like, how about you get the fuck off my boat? Uh, you want some lobsters? I know you can't afford them. Throws them at him. And then he's like, you see these? I call them fun coupons. You know, all the things he was saying, like, as they were leaving. You know? Oh, it was just one of those. It was just one of those scenes that makes you go. There is, a, like, fuck a Fed. Fuck a Fed. But there's a right side here. Yeah. Like, uh, th- that is just. You're being you're being too much, man. Like mm. t- like too much of a elitist fuckboy asshole. You know, like that. I I heard you tried to get your broker's license. You ever think about what could have been if you did? Are you ever sitting on the subway and just like uh, just like? And mm. I'm like, God, you're such a dick. Yeah. You're such. Do a some dick. research into me. I figured I'd do some research into you. You know, yeah. he's like, yeah, he's doing. He's he was real mob boss in it. You know, he he was very power. You know, he thought he was untouchable. You know, because mm-hmm. he's like, I don't know. I mean, fair. Like, dude, oh, tons been, of money. Yeah, yeah like, dude's been. And I mean, like, technic. Okay, so what he was doing <clears throat> is legal to like scam people. It's just it's a shitty thing to do, but legal. But the the illegal part was whenever he started to like launder his money, or like, was it illegal from the jump? Like, is it like? So the thing was, the reason the Investors Center was getting away with it is because they were not selling tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of shares. They were selling a little bit, making like 300 bucks, making like 500 bucks on sales. It started becoming more noticeable and more of a problem when he started selling those penny stocks at a absurd clip. Uh, like, uh, that's what's illegal is because he is, he's selling something that's not there. You know, when he was talking about Aerotine and he was like, they're a, they're a high, uh, high tech firm out of the Midwest. And then they show you the little fucking shed that they're working out of. And it's like, he's, he's like, he is scamming people by lying to them. It's not like a, it's not a, an estimated guess mm. based on the, uh, based on the market's flow and what he's what he's supposed to be doing it is simply him trying to put money in his pocket not theirs and you know i don't know the technical legalities of it but i took it because in that conversation at the investor center he's like so what you're doing here it's like it's completely legal and he's like i wouldn't say that it's just that like uh uh you know like it's it's such it, it a low so, amount that they don't care it was so inconsequential at their level that it didn't, it like it didn't really matter. Like they were, they weren't fucking people's lives up. They were taking a handful of money, getting fifty percent commission. Like if you get someone to invest five hundred dollars, you're taking home two fifty that day. Cool, that was a good day uh, for for those working at the investor <laughs> center. You know, like uh, he gets on the phone, sells what six thousand, and he gets three thousand. He's like, I made three thousand dollars on that phone call alone, and everyone looked at me like I just discovered fire. That and, yeah, I mean it. And and that that was an interesting, like, kind of part of the movie is that even though he's a total piece of shit, you kind of root for him in the beginning. Like, oh, yeah, because he starts he starts as the underdog. mm. He starts. I'm I'm saying even like kind of further into it, like not just when he's in the investment center before he like makes his own company, like until he gets like. uh, I don't know. I I don't know when it switched, but I, I mean, it was. It's just sort of an, an evolution over the course of the movie that, like, mm-hmm. it takes, like, for varying people, the the switch happens at different points for a lot of a lot of folks, I'd say. But, like, uh, I'm with you, you know, uh, as as far as entertainment is concerned, you bring a Fed into it. I'm rooting for the dude who the Fed is investigating. Mm-hmm. Like when I'm watching a movie like that's just mm-hmm. like I want him to get away with it now in the context of real life. Fuck it. I hope the I hope that uh, he gets caught for what he's doing. But like when you're watching the movie, it's like, oh, shit, can he keep getting away with this? Mm. Like uh, you want you want to see him do what he's doing for as long as he can, because you're like. uh, It's like a train wreck. You can't look you can't look away. You're like, uh, oh, my God, what's going to happen with this dude next? He's just like the fucking office they created. At Stratton Oakmont, mm. where it's just a fucking rager every goddamn day. It's yeah. like, it's kind of like, you know, that you will never be able to like get in this position. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so out there. You're like, um, I can never be in this position. And even though I know it's bad, like, 
I still want to see them succeed because I know it's so bad that I'll never do it. But like, if I were, you know, like here's what all the benefits would be, you know, like kind yeah. of like, uh, it's like the mob uh, movies, like the, the stuff yeah. when you, when you yeah. root for the people in the mob, they're murdering, they're fuck, They're also fucking people over. They're like, mm. it's basically this. Like, like not much beyond that. Like Jordan Belfort's just not capping motherfuckers in the back of the fucking Stratton Oakmont office, you know, like True. that's all. Yeah. He is. Yeah. I mean, the mob does this as well, you know, just, puts people in bad positions, takes all their money and doesn't give them any more, you know, an option, you mm-hmm. know? So he's like, he's kind of doing the same thing um, in a way, but yeah, this, I don't know. This was a lot like, uh, like I expected a very dude bro movie, but then I'm like, okay, well, it's, it's directed by Martin of Scorsese. The dude, it's yeah, a and I'm like of the dude bros who like it. Yeah. And I'm like, no way. Martin Scorsese is like a dude bro like, I don't know, like watch it, like his previous movies. I'm like, this dude is, he's above just making a movie full of greed and like, what, like just sex and drugs. Completely and, devoid you know, of a message, yeah. you know, like, uh, he yeah. knows what he's, he knows what he's doing, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, I guess I already put, um, we have Kristen Milioti as Teresa as a best supporting actress. I put Jonah Hill in there, uh, for best supporting actor, uh, right, for, for Donnie as, as a nom. I put Margot Robbie in there uh, for best actress. Like that end scene, like uh, you're not taking my kids away. Like would be like her mo, like her. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oscar no, like, moment. She was. She um, killed this whole thing. I was thinking mm. she was the best actress, not as well. I think that like uh, this kind of. I don't think it was her first role or anything, but it certainly launched her career in a different trajectory to mm. to the point we we know her now as an A list actress. You know, like yeah. she is. She is one of the best or one of the biggest around uh and she's mm. certainly worthy of a nod there for best actress for our decade awards mm-hmm. and i put leo in there yeah, as, uh, as jordan no jordan belford but i guess for i guess writing it's really just based on jordan belford's book and like it's all based on like true events and stuff so i don't i mean but there's still like writing to the move i don't know like no, yeah, I, that's, I think like that's direction, a tough one, but though. like I think direction. Martin Scorsese yeah, gets a nod for sure. Yeah. I think this is a uh, this is incredibly Martin Scorsese stylistically. Like it's just a, uh, it feels Scorsese as fuck. You know, a lot of shots reminded me of Goodfellas. Uh, hmm. Like they did a they did a lot of good shit here, but uh, I do think that the that Terrence Winter might be worthy of the writer nod here for. Uh, for Wolf mm. of Wall Street. I think it was uh I, I I haven't read the book, but I have a tough time believing Jordan Belfort gets the message that this movie gets across quite as succinctly. Mm. You know, like I do think that it being adapted into a movie by another writer probably gave it a little extra emotional oomph. Like I imagine you read Jordan Belfort writing his own book and it feels a little okay, guy. You're just kind of mm. you're kind of subtle bragging, uh, you know, like you're just kind mm-hmm. of telling us how awesome it was to fuck shit up in the late 80s and 90s. Uh, I, I just I, I have it because. I don't know Yeah, how, how much can Jordan Belfort like I get I don't know, I, it seems better now than what I imagined him to be during this stage of his life. But like, right, how yeah. much can he really like change like how much has he really changed right know? right no yeah um, i it's funny as fuck you know i uh i remember being shit i don't know 15 16 17 somewhere in that range and uh i get a, i get a dm on twitter from jordan belfort no <laughs> yeah yeah like and uh on homie twitter? Is, yeah yeah and he was uh I'm assuming it was kind of like a mass thing that like if mm. you clicked on his page, followed him, something like that, sent you a DM promoting his new book. Uh, uh, and I was like, I was like, damn, man, I watched a whole movie about you and you're like, you're doing what I would do with my podcast. <laughs> you know, like, like, I'll like you follow me. Hey, check this out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my like, book. I, don't, I was just kind of like Jordan Belford. I, I made 
forty nine million dollars in a year. Ever the salesman, man. Ever the salesman. Yeah. Wow. Um, I guess I don't know. He seems pretty well off now. Oh yeah, that's that's the thing is that none of this fucked him over in the long term. Uh, he and it's just another example of how our uh, how our justice system will, uh, you know, show a little love. To those who uh, fuck people over on Wall Street, at the very least, uh, like it's around. He's, he has currently around a hundred million dollars. No, I mean twenty twenty two. Hum, so, humble compared to his compared to his earnings once upon a time, but uh, but he's I, bet he, for life. So. Yeah, there's nothing that he has to do or, or worry about. Anything Ever. he wants is his. Yeah, like yeah. I, it's kind of nuts. Like. Uh, like a hundred million dollars, you don't have to do a thing the rest of your life. You don't like anything you want yours, but like that's nothing compared to everyone else that's above him. You like one billion dollars is ten Jordan Belforts. Fucking and, nuts! And, and like wrapping ten, my mind like, around that always fucks me up. Fucks me up, man. Because like a uh, fuck, <laughs> you know, you see a contract in sports for like fifty million dollars, and that's like a. $50 million a year. It's like one of the biggest contracts in football. You know, you're like, oh my God, what the fuck? He's making $50 million a year to play football. And then you, you times that by two, it's $100 million. Times that by two, it's $200 million. Times that by two, it's $400 million. Like, and there are people worth hundreds of billions? That's, that's, a, con- that's a country. Like that that's some countries in the world. Like uh you know, makes sense. One person needs that much money. Oh, know? of course. Whenever they I mean, could buy a literal country almost. You yeah. know it's necessary. <laughs> Obviously. You know it's um, not uh you know it's not uh senseless, you know it's not useless wealth. Mm. Uh hey man, if you got hundreds of billions of dollars. As long as you pay your fair share of taxes, fuck it. Do your thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Too bad they'll they'll buy a piece of shitty art and then appraise it for two hundred mm-hmm. million dollars and then say that it, you know get a tax write off for a piece of art. Which, yeah, you know loopholes exists. And... Loopholes do exist to benefit them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, like loopholes exist to make the rich richer. That's kind of uh, and Jordan Belfort exploited the shit out of those you know what i'm saying like uh had he not uh you know probably could have done a whole bunch of legal shit and been just fine you know there was a there was a time Mm. in this movie where you know before his whole i'm not leaving Mm. i'm not fucking leaving he could have made it out with all those millions he had and been just fine that's that's true yeah dang he really did have an easy ass out like they were like, just cut a deal, yeah. cut a deal. Tell us what you know about everyone else on Wall Street, and we'll say fuck it. You know, like that's cool. Uh, <laughs> I I always wondered that in movies, whenever people people snort stuff, and you obviously see that it was snorted. Oh yeah, like, like they have obviously to they're not doing cocaine. You yeah. know, like I mean, like maybe in some movies, which would be nuts if like there's legit cocaine being done, but it's crushed vitamin B. Um, so there's just like, huh. Um, but Jonah Hill did it so much. He got bronchitis and had to be hospitalized. Um, he snorted so much vitamin B for this movie. He had to be hospitalized, which, wow. Jesus. This next one here, Matthew McConaughey's, uh, humming was improvised. <laughs> Uh, it was, uh, he just it was started a doing up. it. <laughs> oh yeah. He just started doing it. He just started doing it. And like, you see Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> kind of like look off screen. Yeah. He's looking at Martin Scorsese to see <laughs> if it's okay. Man, you know, honestly, I think that's, that's just who Matthew McConaughey is. You sometimes, especially in this role where it doesn't really matter what he does, like just let him go, oh, you know, yeah. let him be Matthew McConaughey. Let him do his thing. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's the grand cosmos. Like, the, he was like, it's fake. Like, he went on for a good two minutes. How of many times? Just a string of analogies. Of how like many times why. a week you jerk off? 
Mm. <laughs> it's like uh, I don't know, three, four, maybe, maybe five. Those are rookie numbers in this game. You got to get those numbers up. Me, twice a day, at the very least. Once when I wake up, and once after lunch. <laughs> was that improvised too, or was that? Oh, like, I have no. I prob- oh, okay, probably okay. scripted there, but uh. <laughs> but man, yeah, you, um, I want you to bring me um, a martini in two minutes and thirty seconds, um, and then for the next seven minutes, and you're like, I don't know, his whole, um. Every March seven and a half minutes, seven, seven and, and one half minutes after yeah. that, you're gonna bring me another, and every, every so on and so forth for the, for that next after that. But uh, man, yeah, oh, he's... the majority, the majority of the film was improvised, as well. Really? Scorsese often encourages. Mm. Uh, That's and, insane. And it is that whole like you know getting that raw feeling mm. of those conversations where they're just going, and you're like uh. It just, they just let it play out, you know, like that scene where they're sitting at the, uh, sitting at the conference table planning their next fucking party, mm. uh, involving the little, the, the little people and tossing them at dartboards <laughs> and, uh, rolling them down the aisle at pins. And, uh, the way they were like, uh, all right. So what if it, what if it, what if this thing, what if that, what if it, they never refer to them as humans. And, yeah. uh, and uh like that was even a, a loophole they choose to exploit they're like oh this is good if we if we view th- if we don't view them as humans and we view them as simply entertainment as an act or a, as a service then we're uh, okay we yeah. can get away with anything yeah. uh then we're okay <laughs> yeah those uh, they were like yeah those trapeze dudes they fucking die and nobody ever sued them uh it's like oh my god you guys mm. are fucking terrible Man. you guys are just the worst yeah, i found the quote uh and he was like, I don't care if you're Warren Buffett or you're Jimmy Buffett. No one knows what stock's going, going to go up, down, sideways, or in circles. You know what Fugazi is? And he's like, Fugazi? Yeah, it's fake. He's like, Fugazi. Yeah, Fugazi. Yeah. Fugazi, Fugazi, it's wazzy. It's a woozy. It's fairy dust. It doesn't <laughs> Fugazi, exist. Fugazi, it's wazzy, it's it never, yeah, 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 it never right. landed. It's, it's no matter. It's not on the elemental chart. That's what yes, he said. It's yeah. not on the elemental chart. It's no chart. matter. It's not fucking uh, real. Yeah, he, like, after he takes, you know, a hit a blow. So it, it makes sense that this dude's just, you know going off on his his monologue rambling you know he he's just oh God, he's i love this i, I love this yeah. another little piece of trivia here and this is another just one of my favorite scenes in the movie you know uh steve madden on mm. set uh given given like a and yeah you know what i love about this shoe you know uh, he's, he's given his usual speech that he would give anywhere he went. Like, uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Steve Madden. Uh, what I love about this shoe is that has, and everyone's like, fuck you, get off the stage. You know, uh, Steven Spielberg was on set that day and essentially co-directed that entire scene. Really? So, yeah. So another, another scene in which one of the best scenes in the movie, uh, <laughs> hmm. you know, I remember Scarface, that last shot. The, basically, the whole last sequence is basically directed by Steven Spielberg, not Brian De Palma and Scarface. You know, like, mm. uh, uh, so just another little connection here uh, with Spielberg and Scorsese. And I love, love that this is Scarface, but better. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Just following this bad dude that you're supposed to be rooting. This meteoric for rise to the top. Yeah. Yeah, this, yeah, and it's not even, like, and Jordan Belfort's not even, like, in the mob boss realm. Like, he's not even, like, killing people, you know, to, to be, like, to make it entertaining. He's, mm-hmm. like, strictly just, yeah, wow, that's kind of kind of nuts. That even on, like, a less exciting premise, you know, for a movie, this is done way better. Like, I guess probably had to be, because in Scarface, they had those distractions of him, you know, gunning down people or, you know, the action you know, to, to kind of bring you away from some stuff that's not as well written. That's and, him having sex with sex workers and doing true, drugs true. all over the fucking place. Like there, there's, there's this whole movie's version of the, of the lifestyle, you know, like uh, there's obviously more that comes with the mob boss territory and the murder and such. Uh, but uh, there's a part in this movie where Jordan Belfort contemplates, Letting Donnie die. Like it might make things easier for me mm. if Donnie's dead. That's true. He does contemplate that for a while. Uh, 
whenever he's super fucked up off of however many quaaludes and then a, a, a bunch of cocaine that he just dumped into his fucking nose, you know, getting saving him from choking. He just sits there on top of him for a second like, uh, hmm, this might be a real he was just on the phone about to get me fucked over for mm-hmm. for this. Maybe this isn't the worst thing in the world. And then he was like, no, 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 fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay, I got it. <laughs> and he saves him, and it's like, uh, okay, whoo, thank God, uh, because that would have been even worse uh, mm. on, on that part. I was just... How did the FBI find that note? Was it just left under the napkin or whatever? I have a feeling, like... I have a feeling Donny Azoff is a huge fucking idiot. Uh... Uh, and just, just kind of left it there, like, uh, and then it was, mm. interesting. That yeah, was, yeah, the, uh, I don't know, just funny that, uh, whenever Margot Robbie and Leonardo were, uh, on the bed full of money going at it, Margot Robbie, you know, came to say that it was extremely uncomfortable, like that fucking on money is, is not what it seems to be. Sharp edges, you know, multiple paper cuts on her back. That sucks. But then DiCaprio says that it didn't hurt, but he or it hurt, but he didn't care because he was on top of Margot Robbie naked, you know, which uh, I guess whenever. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. he wouldn't that really sounds, sounds about right. on the money. But I mean, I, I've always thought about that is like it would be it would be nice, you know, on top of a, a pile of money. But really, whoever's on bottom is just getting it. It's like not a, it's not a uh, it's it's not as functional as as one would hope, you know. And you know another thing that's kind of like that, the lady in the tramp spaghetti noodle kiss thing. Right. Do like, you really want to be cute? kissing someone with like like mouthful of spaghetti, spaghetti noodle in their mouth? Yeah, it's like it's like it doesn't really work when you do it, but in the movie or in the movies it, it looks cool and and, and it yeah, feels it works. Cool, you know, in it the works. movies, but but yeah, man, what a I don't know, this movie was not at all what I expected. Um like it's just that that last shot. Um just of of those people, you know, just of normal people, and kind of, like there. Oh, I also saw uh, another take on it that it's like showing the audience like watching the movie. No, oh, yeah, like yeah. because even like their heads are lit from behind. You know, like like you do see in a movie theater, like because or whatever. And I'm, well, I don't it's know a if very. I take, it's that. all very meta, you yeah. know, like there's yeah. a, there's a lot of fourth wall breaking. There's a mm. there's a lot sure. of so like that's also been a thought of mine. Like, is it kind of like a. I think that part is playing into what the what Jordan Belfort was talking about the whole movie, you know, like people are sheep. You feed them, mm. feed them whatever and they'll they'll listen. Oh, dang. I guess it's probably like, you'll see this movie, you'll know that the stock market sucks, it's corrupt and everything, but you'll go home and you'll go right back to it. Yeah, you know, like, you'll yeah. see this movie, you it won't it won't change anything. It's no, not going to change anything. It doesn't like, do anything. Uh, and that's just kind of how I, I took it, is that it's just like, what are you going to fucking do? Like, you're going to sit there, you're going to watch this whole thing, and then you're just going to, mm. you're going to be like, yeah, well, can't do shit about that, so... Damn. Hmm. Yeah, that that last shot really like reframes the whole movie. I mean, uh, you 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 get that Jordan's not a good guy. Like through the movie, you don't need that last shot to be like, oh, this is what the movie's about. You know, that, that's not what I'm saying. But like, it really makes it uh, like obvious in the end there hmm. that that's like what they're it, like. It's I don't know. It, I, I there's no way I'm coming off that and still going like, <laughs> fuck yeah, Jordan Belford. I'm you know I want to be just like this guy. Well, you know, no, I mean, like, even before that, when he sm- yeah. smacks his wife, does a line of fucking cokes, kidnaps his daughter, and gets in a car accident, like, uh... And punches like, her in the gut as well. Like, I, yeah. literally, I literally gasped, like, whenever he did, like, I did not know it was in the movie, and, like, he punched her, and I was like, <gasps> like, oh, sh- like, damn. Like, I don't know, yeah. I I just, like, was not expecting it at all. There's so like, few, re- like, I don't know that there is a redeeming quality mm. in jordan belford uh that we see in the movie you know like this dude is scum like that's kind of what they that's kind of what they put before us and like impeccable that he's alive um, oh dude the amount of drugs that man was doing he might be alive but 
Not for longer? Not for much longer? I, I, I can't imagine so, man. Yeah, like, the, like that thing he said at the beginning of the movie where he was like, mm. yeah, I do this to do this, and I take this to take the edge off, and I do I – like he takes enough drugs to mm. put the island of Manhattan in comatose for a fucking week yeah. on a daily basis. <laughs> uh, Dang, yeah. What, he went through his routine. And like you think that's real? Like you think that, that was might like be... for real? There's like it's just too many drugs for him to be alive. I mean, that's what I'm th- like. I mean, I'm sure they did that much cocaine like on the daily, but like I don't know. But the amount of like I could see it though. Mixing I guess. of substances they yeah. were doing like the the quaaludes with alcohol. You got to die when you do that, right? Like like And here's another thing for me, like quaaludes like they were talking about been off the market since like 83 mm. uh so it was a i'm assuming fantastic drug to be on uh but like it comparatively do you think it like i i have no frame of reference do you think it would be like essentially oxycotton that's what i kind of assumed and like the the high he got kind of seems like it you know he's like, just very like doesn't feel anything you know because yeah, i've been on the cerebral killer. palsy phase you know so yeah. he is so relaxed that like he doesn't even know what to do with his limbs you know it, it like kind of seems and that like he can barely move you know his yeah, body so i've been off painkillers after my knee surgeries and stuff and like uh mm. what he was feeling is pretty spot on like this sort of like hazy movement you move your arm and it looks like it's like a motion fade behind it and you're like yeah. uh whoa this is fucking crazy you know like uh it's crazy that that's just literal heroin like yeah like just it's it's literal heroin like in just prescribed in a way that doesn't make it seem like heroin like paint like i didn't realize that like i don't until like a couple years ago that like the whole like pharmaceutical market is just selling like heroin and painkillers because like I'm not going to lie. Like I was pretty close to getting addicted to like pain. So was I. Like just right after my wisdom teeth surgery, like, like that was the, I like, I don't know. Like, and I like just after every surgery, I'm like, dang, like, I don't really know if I even want to be taking them because of last time. Like I was like, I was like really no, loving them like, uh, I, like I uh, admittedly probably took one or two too many after oh, I was yeah. feeling all right. You know, oh, like, yeah. uh, I was like, this shit kind of rocks. So yeah. like, Bless, blessed be the fact that I ran out because, yeah. uh, like, man, because if I had like an infinite supply, I don't know. Shit. Yeah. No, dude, like, because that shit felt good, but I cannot do that. I can't do that. Like, mm. wow. It's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's nuts that, like, I don't know. Um, what did, what really made I don't know kind of like Ozark they dip into it a little bit about how like pharmaceutical like it's a corrupt pharmaceutical company that like gets legit heroin or like pretty much know, every like illegal heroin to put in their you know and then market it as you saw the markups better whatever like I, I'm sure that sort of bust there was some sort of bust like last year that Johnson and Johnson shipments got caught with like a certain amount of cocaine dang barely made a blip in the fucking news Johnson and Johnson one of the companies that provided a fucking vaccine for covid got <laughs> got caught moving coke oh the world we live in is so amazing and i uh wow like what a world we have made it's what insane it's insane shit one of my favorite facts about this movie though is that the word fuck in its various conjugations is said 500 and 69 times, <laughs> which at the time made it the most use of the word in a mainstream R-rated movie. Something's uh, beat it? Something's yeah, beat but it? like it was a movie called Swearnet. Oh. They, uh, they were trying, count. like, so it doesn't really count for me, but like. That doesn't count. It said it 935 times in that movie. Damn. So like, it was just, That's like the but whole, the whole movie. movie was about, about cussing. So like, fuck it, you know, but, uh, before that, that was the second time Martin Scorsese had held the record for the most F-bombs mm. in a movie as Goodfellas in 1990 
300 F bombs was the record hey, at that time. Okay, Martin Scorsese. He's yeah. he's a man on a mission. You know, maybe maybe he has another one in the back. You know, yeah, it takes he's going, time. He's going for the thousand fuck. But yes, it takes time to develop a movie where you can say fuck a whole lot. He's getting better and better. You know, Goodfellas was his good start. Wolf of Wall Street, he came back even stronger. Who knows what he's got in the bag next? You know, he's coming He's coming strong with something. Um, yeah. And I can't – it's going to be interesting to, to see. I don't know. I'm just taking a look at swearing. I don't know because I would imagine you'd hear fuck quite a lot just in the movie. Oh my god! Yeah, there's this. There's a shot in in this movie that is shot from an iPhone. <laughs> from Swearnet or Wolf of Wall Street? From Wolf of Wall Street. Wait, what? Uh, it's it's a very very brief quick shot. It's uh, on the plane with a uh, fat with the fasten your seatbelt b- sign blinking. Uh, they needed a shot of that, but instead of taking up money to big ass camera big ass camera they were like the one of the producers was on or the effects super supervisor was on a flight took a video for reference and was like so we need we need something like this and martin scorsese was like fuck it man we'll just use that i didn't even notice i didn't notice either but technology man that's 2013 what iphone would that have been 2013 iphone like god would that be five or four five s would would be the newest possible iPhone, which you can now and get I'd imagine for fifty-seven dollars. Uh, I'd imagine the effects <laughs> supervisor on the Wolf of Wall Street probably had the newest iPhone. So I mean, yeah, it's either a five or five S. That's like, damn. I mean, we're getting that's kind of cool. Like the cool thing about this project is we're like, that's nine years ago. Like it's not that long ago at no. all now. Um, like we're catching up, we're caught up to what like is contemporary history, essentially, mm. uh, contemporary pop culture yeah, history. I was and, alive and like sort of. I was thirteen. This. Yeah. yeah, I was thirteen, about to turn fourteen when this movie came out. Uh, I'm about to go on haul. I'm about to go trick or treat. You know, like uh, I don't know what I dressed up as when I was thirteen. Maybe like a purge character. If that was out yet, probably not. Was it the purge out? yet nah nah it was mm. oh yeah i think the first one would have been but uh but God, yeah. what, would, what, would, yeah, what did i do for halloween in 2013 i feel like i might have been troy palomalu wow wore a wore a pittsburgh steelers 43 jersey and okay. had a big ass fucking wig okay I said, fuck it uh i troy- think that was my 2013 halloween costume i always fucked with troy palomalu he was just a cool guy i love i love seeing him pop up in the head and shoulders commercials you know He's a, just a, I don't know. That's, that's a cool Halloween costume. That's, that's, would have never thought to dress up as him. Cool. I'm reading some more fucking oh. fun facts. And, you know, I, uh, as someone who likes to take in a little bit of marijuana, hmm. uh, Cheech and Chong are kind of fucking legendary, uh, you know, up in smoke and various, uh, stoner comedies in the seventies and eighties. Uh, but this, this little note says that there is an unexpected person to thank for the film's existence. And it is Tommy Chong. And if you've watched, uh, if you've watched, uh, that 70s show, he's, a uh, he's the, he's like Hyde's dude. Who's like, uh, hmm. that's, that's what I'm talking about, man. You know, like, <laughs> Oh man. How is he to thank for the movie? So, Chong was serving a sentence in a California prison uh, for selling drug paraphernalia over the internet. <laughs> nice. And uh, he was cellmates with Jordan fucking Belfort for a 22 month sentence for stock fraud. And Belfort was telling Tommy a bunch of stories. And uh, Tommy was like, hey, man, you ought to write a book. No. And then he wrote The way. Wolf of Wall Street. Wow. What a damn. I this love that. Like I, that, might be my fa- that might be my favorite fact about this movie is that Tommy Chong is partially responsible for its inception. Wow. Yeah, this movie is just like fine wine. It just kind of keeps getting better and better as it goes. Man, <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, my goodness. Martin Scorsese said that there were actual real-life stockbrokers on set, some of whom actually did work at Stratton Oakmont. Uh like in those shots where they're on the phones and like dialing and shit, like uh, damn, 
I guess. So, yeah, what happened to them? Were they all? I I think they. I think the company. I don't know if the company ever folded. Is Stratton Oak, like? I'm assuming it did. It can't have. <laughs> can't have kept doing what it was doing, right? Like, yeah, no way. It's still active. Founded. Yeah. Closing of the operation. firm in 1996. Oh, okay. 96. Closed in 1996. So, uh, yeah, so they all just lost their jobs. Damn. Um, Thir- almost 1,400 employees. That dude had 1,400 people scamming the fuck out of people. Damn. Man. And, like, I guess how – so, like, they make 50%, but then does Jordan just take – he takes part of their commission or like, does he just get the deals that he does? You know, like how did, like That's how did that question. work there's, for him? How did the business model work? Well, you there's, know? Oh, <laughs> one of the things he really got fucked for was insider trading. Like, you know, he, mm. he was scamming the market by buying the stocks he was selling. Oh, okay. So oh, he would okay. sell the stocks to himself Oh, there, there's the money laundering, the obvious yeah, illegal. Yeah, okay. that, that's the yeah. one that made. Okay. That's the one yeah. that got his ass. Yeah. Uh, but I'm assuming there's some sort of kick up that like he gets he gets a percentage mm. of everyone's sales because he did found the firm and stuff. Like, uh, he gave him the script. Yeah, I'm know? sure there's I'm sure there's something there. Uh, I mean, if the dude can speak like that, you know, like he's got a good motivational itch or like bone in him. Um, like, cause, cause those speeches, like, that would get me fired up and that, that would get me to scam the fuck out of some families that day to make, you know, f- like lots of money. If I was in that situation, like, dude hyped him up, you know, like, uh, right. Well, oh, dude. And I mean, like, it's, it's undeniable. If I was, I mean, here's the thing. I would ha- like, I would have to be a completely different kind of person to, mm. uh, even be in the situation where I'm working on Wall Street or Jordan <laughs> Belfort. But if I was that kind of person and I was on Wall Street working for Jordan Belfort, I would love working for Jordan Belfort. Like that, this, this office environment that he created and this like, uh, like I'm already not a partier, but if I was a partier, mm. oh my fucking God, is there a better job on earth than working for Stratton Oakmont during this time? Just no. don't, don't clean a fishbowl. You know, no. that's, that's like the only rule. Kind of like. That's the only time that something bad happened in that office was when a dude was just cleaning his fishbowl. Poor dude. You know, like, uh, I guess it was like there, it was the Steve Madden day, you know, Who and the like it was, fuck yeah. has the goal <laughs> call on a Tuesday night. I fucking love Rob Reiner in this role, man. He's fantastic. Uh, uh what kind of hook it takes credit yeah, card? Uh, the rich one. Forty nine thousand dollars worth of sides, or however much like it was, you know, like uh... yeah, <laughs> nah, dude. I like there are just so many great fucking quotes from this movie. You remember when uh, uh, Brad like Brad gets out of jail and he's like, uh, sadly, Brad died two years later. He was thirty five. Mozart died at thirty five. Not that they had a lot in common. I uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know why that came to mind. You know. <laughs> I fucking loved that, you know, like just a, just like a, I, I, and I have the feeling like that might have been one of those improvisational, <laughs> like he just, he was like, you know, Mozart died at thirty five. That's like why I know that, like that's a weird fact to know. Um, like I mean, why, like I don't know, like if that is improv, that means that Leo just knew that off the top of his head, and like while he was reading the line, just decided right. to be like. Damn, Mozart died at at thirty five. You know, or like, like what? That's... Which would make it so much funnier to me, especially if he like said it and then was having trouble trying to connect it back. So he just kept going, and he was like, "Uh, not that uh, not that they had that much in common, but uh, yeah, I I don't know why that came to mind. <laughs> that's that's fucking fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing I will say that this movie completely and utterly destroyed forever. Uh, for some people at some job opportunities is interviews, job interviews, uh, way too many people, way too many people in sales positions have to deal with, sell me this pen. Mm. That is so fucking dumb. That is so idiotic. What a terrible, terrible way to gauge if someone is a good salesman. 
uh, here's my thing. I go up, I, I, I take the pen, I leave. Uh, it's, it's this guy's only pen. It's this guy's only pen. What's he going to do? He's going to call me when I get home. He's going to be like, hey, I need my pen. I'm going to go, yeah, it's going to cost you five bucks. <laughs> and then he's going to be like, you know what? You're hired. Hmm. You know what? You're hired. Uh, that's a but, good, uh, wow. That's a good, that's a good one. I just take it and leave. Yeah. Um, I've you, heard, <clears throat> I've heard that the only answer to that question, uh, is, uh, do you need a pen? If they say no, you move on because like, if they don't need a pen, they're not going to buy it. Fuck, fuck them. Move on to the next person. And you like, you just like, because most answers in sales is no. Mm -hmm. Um, anyways, you know, you, you only get like those couple yeses, but those couple that those couple like make you the, the money, but like, it's a stupid question because like, you don't need to bullshit reasons to buy it. You know what a fucking pen is. You know, you, you're not, you're not going to actually walk up to someone and be like, this pen will change your life. You know, like it, it's not going to, it's just a pen and everyone knows that, you know, like you could be like, sure. This pen lasts five times longer than the average pen. You see, I, I love this pen. I personally love this pen. There's a, uh, it's like, it, he just like grabs the pen out of their hand, goes on to the next guy, sell me this pen. Uh, I just like I, that, that shit. I thought it was funny. Uh, and then the fact that that's what he fell back on for his seminar hmm. made me go, yeah, this is just the, the ending of this movie is even more the whole people are sheep sort of thing. Like if that's what you're selling people in a seminar, like teaching them how to sell, you just go up to them and go, sell me this pen. Like, nah, man, you gotta, you gotta do a little more. Wait, than there was a sell me this pen scene before that. Yes, there was, yeah. there was. What uh, was Brad, the context of that? It was him sitting with his boys <laughs> from, uh, from home. Uh, when he was talking about founding a firm of his own, getting right. them on, he was like, uh, you know, this guy sells anything he can get his hands on, mostly weed. This guy sells, uh, this, That's this, right. this. How did Brad weed. end up selling it? It was like, Brad it was goes, a uh, Brad goes, uh, he's like, all right, here. And, you know, Jordan's like, you know what? This is my guy right here. You know, he doesn't fuck up. He's got this. He's got this. And Brad goes, uh, all right, all right. Yeah. <clears throat> Write your name on that napkin right there for me. He's mm. like, I can't. He goes, there you go. Supply and demand, my friend. That's right. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he just, literally said hey write your name on a napkin oh you don't have a pen now you have to buy one from me because you exactly. need to write your exactly. name down like oh okay wow yeah flawed logic uh, there i think but uh <laughs> one of my favorite like one of my favorite scenes in this movie you were uh you were just commenting on it the other day uh, just the other day fuck uh just a couple minutes ago uh <laughs> four hundred thirty thousand dollars in one month shorty huh mm -hmm. what the their business expenses. <laughs> yeah, we had the we had the you the got twenty six thousand. You have twenty six thousand dollars for one <laughs> fucking dinner. He's like, no, no, no. This can be explained, Dad. We had clients, Pfizer clients, champagne, mm. and uh, and then another another mention there of a a company who has become yeah. much more uh, known the last couple of years, Pfizer. Um, and uh, that's I got <laughs> I got them pumping in my veins. Actually, yeah, exactly. Same. Damn. Same. And, uh, Pfizer gang, Let's go. Pfizer gang, but uh, <laughs> you know, I love that Donnie Jordan's like, you know, uh, it was all tell him about the sides, tell him about the sides, and Donnie was like, <laughs> I, Donnie's like, I ordered the sides, so sides twenty six thousand dollars worth of sides. What what do they cure cancer? And I love the way Donnie gives him shit. He's like, uh, Donnie's like, yeah, the the sides actually, did, yeah, they did cure cancer. That's the problem. That's why they're so expensive. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And I loved, I loved him giving, giving Max shit the whole time. Just being like, uh, just being like, fuck uh, you, dude. Like, God, I loved it. Yeah. But no, this movie is, is fun as fuck. You know, uh, like it is difficult to watch at parts just because, you know, they're complete and utter pieces of shit. Uh, and I aspire in no capacity to be like them. Mm hmm. But it's it's a fun film to watch. It's a so I'm interested in how it will do on our uh, in our rating system mm. here. One last question: How do you interpret this? The kissing scene between Leo and Joanna L Loomley, which was the aunt that uh, yeah, he put aunt the Emma. name in, uh, he was so nervous that the scene required a twenty twenty seven takes to get right. Does that mean that he kissed her twenty seven times? Or that it took him 27 times just to get to the kiss. 
That's a good question. There's probably, it's probably a mix of both. There's a few, there's a few kisses in there, but there's probably also times where he didn't, he didn't quite get there. Uh, because, uh, the way I also read that is Joanna Lumley is kind of a, kind of legendary, kind hmm. of a, and it was enough that's, to make even that's, Leonardo that's DiCaprio nuts. Yeah, that's nuts. go like, Oh man, like this is, uh, this is kind of nuts. I'm about to kiss, uh, <laughs> Joanna Lumley. Uh, maybe he just wanted to do it. A couple times. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Wow. But, uh, Come on, Leo. Man. Well, anyways, he, he's more into the younger, the younger, uh, age. Or, oh, that's like, true, too. Age. Maybe, maybe that was it. Oh, I didn't even think about that. He didn't want to kiss an old, per, a person older than him. Yeah. A person not in like, between the he ages. He was like, hey, man, him. my cap is 23. <laughs> I can't go up above that. Um, Dang. Yeah, Leo is, uh, Leo's quite the, quite the guy. Um, mm-hmm. A little bit of Jordan but, uh, Belford and, and Leo there, you know, maybe. A little overlap. Mm. Well, uh, was so good. They probably got along into quite character. well. Yeah. If I had to guess, <laughs> if I had to guess, Jordan Belford and Leonardo DiCaprio spent some time together off screen here. Maybe that's why uh, it was so easy to slip into character there a little bit. Um, I don't know. Shit, man. But you ready for these ratings? Oh, yeah. It, ooh, enjoyments? Interesting. Uh, Just... On the basis that, like, it was a three-hour movie. That'd be the only thing that, like, held it back. Is that maybe it was too long? Um, but, like, I wasn't complaining while I was watching it. Like, there wasn't, no, it's like... it's interesting because we'll be coming from a couple different spots, you mm-hmm. know. Since this was your first watch, the three-hour thing is probably a little bit more... Uh, there's probably something different about it for you than there is for me. As this is a movie that I've... I don't rewatch three hour movies a lot. And like I said, I've watched this movie five or six times. Mm. Uh, Dang, yeah, like, fair. I've seen Batman about that many times. And that's a three hour movie. Oh, yeah. So, I've, al- I, I've already seen the Batman I mean, it's more probably than like 11 Wall times now. I don't know. I've watched it. Yeah, I've seen lot. it over 10, I feel like. But, uh, no, nah, but like, uh, I think that. This movie, while it is three hours and there's almost certainly parts you could cut and lose mm. nothing, uh, there's something about it that upon rewatch feels like, and I don't know if it's because I watched it when I was 15, so there's probably something nostalgic here for me as well, but, uh, th- I, I like thoroughly enjoy watching this movie every time I watch it. I've never, uh, I've never watched it and gone like, uh, well, like that could have been shorter, you know. I've I've always watched it and been like, "Fuck yeah, that's a long mm. movie," but I liked it. Uh, and it's it's kind of a weird one for that reason because we have had others that I've been like, "It's mm. long," and that kind of takes away from it. But the length of this one uh, hasn't taken away from it for me. Like, uh, it's funny too. Like the first time I watched this, I think I was uh, it was between the hours of like two and five a.m. Mm. Like I stayed up late one night and watched this wow. movie and I was like, uh, cause there's no better way to watch this movie than in the Jordan Belfort state of mind. Uh, <laughs> absolutely fucked up from the, in the middle of the night. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> no, but, uh, that's, uh, might be missing the point a little bit there, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> nah, for, for me, this is, this is probably not quite that five out of five enjoyment, but it's pretty high. It's pretty high. Uh, kind wh- of, where, where do you think you're sitting? It's kind of like the same thing as an like American Gangster. I don't know. I was like, I didn't think about it, but like, um, like a man that starts, you know, kind of at the bottom, works his way to the top, like kind of scamming off some people. Like, you know, you have uh Denzel that's selling drugs to people, you know, keeping them mm-hmm. in that drug life just so he can be rich, and then you have, you know, uh, Jordan Belfort that just takes money yeah, from but- anyone. You got know, the investigator whatever. who gives him shit and stuff with yeah. Kyle Chandler and uh, um, and Russell Crowe. Which I not to the degree you know uh, that this FBI agent's in here. You know you don't get like no, yeah. Agents, Russell Crowe's but, a much larger part of American Gangster than uh, I don't know. I'd say like it's enjoyment. Like let's see, just kind of yeah, let's take a look at the other enjoyment movies. score. See where we hold it. I don't know if it's a five. No, it's um, I. I would I would confidently say it's not. Uh, yeah. I don't I don't think it is. Um, 
Where how how you feeling? Yeah, I don't think I enjoy it as much as like a Kill Bill, but not too far. I mean, like Avatar is pretty close. It's another long movie that the visuals keep you in Avatar. But, like, this one, it's kind of, like, just the story and wanting to know how it unfolds. Yeah, you know, for mm. me, the the more we talked about it and the more we've, we've refined our takes, the, the less I stand by what I said at the beginning, that this is my favorite Scorsese movie. Mm. Uh, you know, I think I, my favorite Scorsese movie probably is Goodfellas. You know, I could it, it almost certainly is. There's something about this movie that uh, is fun to watch probably more fun to watch than Goodfellas, but Goodfellas, I feel like is, uh, I mean, you got what a two hour and 20 minute movie with a very, very complete compact storyline. It is also based off true events, but, uh, there's something else about it that feels, that feels good story wise. Like narratively, it feels like it unfolded the way it was supposed to like a movie. Like this Mm. one feels, little open-ended it was just kind of like uh this is what this dude's life became uh and when did and that was in 1990 Mm. i was gonna say that like maybe it was just like more of a a timepiece you know it's like like uh that it's just an older movie and it's it, it seems more like a film you know than than like wolf of wall street does like wolf of wall street like there's it's you know kind of more fourth wall breaking, more like crazy, just stuff. Happening I mean, you got Ray Liotta, Ray like, Liotta narrating the whole. Like, I think there's a lot of similarities between mm. uh, Henry Hill and Jordan Belfort as protagonists, as far as like the talking mm. to the audience and being like, mm-hmm. uh, "So, see, this yeah. is what this guy was all about." Uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think um, I'm probably in that four eight range. Yeah, I think it, it fits in there. I think that's all that's right. Cool. Where I'm at. Then I say we give Wolf of Wall Street on the enjoyment scale of four point eight out of five stars. As far as the genre, you know, we got a a biography drama uh, mm. sort of thing. Uh, I'd say the standard for that, as far as what we've covered so far, was set by Malcolm X. Mm. Which yeah, um, Malcolm is a five for that. And, and if uh, that's a five, this is not quite. Mm. Uh, for me, you know, like, uh, I think it's probably for probably another four, eight or four, nine. Like mm. it was a, it was a solid, it was a solid endeavor. And, you know, like we also gave American gangster a five out of five in the genre, but it also had that crime side of it mm. along with the biography sort of feel. Um, yeah, it's like, imagine if denim you know the agent side of the movie was like just was half of the movie like american gangster was Mm. like imagine if like you also had that aspect and like they got like getting closer and closer and then you know like an unexpected that would have been cool cool, but i i I don't think it i think it would have been like uh Mm. well it's been done before this is basically american gangster sure Uh, i don't know that there is another movie like the wolf of wall street necessarily as of yet uh Mm. Wow. It yeah. is pretty singular. If we give it a 4-8, it joins Dumb and Dumber and King Kong, which is just hilarious. Hey, man, like, King Kong yeah. is to action-adventure movies what The Wolf of Wall Street is to biographies, and Dumb and, Dumb and Dumber is to comedy. <laughs> I mean, uh, could, I, you couldn't have said it any better, you know? I mean, it's that's, that's, that's just how we feel. It's it's. I feel like that analogy is, is like, sacred almost. It's always been true. I've just seems so obvious just seems too, but now that it's it's written and right it feels here, like ancient it's, wisdom yes yeah, like ah oh yeah. of course dumb and dumber king kong and the wolf of wall street are all related um as as is concerned <laughs> to their genre is this uh, now, just a four eight movie across the board i think it might be uh so like in our last rating we got our critically our critical view of the film mm. uh just how Great it was all around. Acting, uh, cinematography, soundtrack, uh, editing, all of the above. Uh, and you know, I, uh, I'm pretty, pretty high on this one. 
You know, I think it was a really well, well made movie. You know, I don't think it was, uh, I don't think is it was it higher than a four eight or is that the ceiling? I, I, think, I don't know. I think ceiling is four eight five. Okay. Like that's uh yeah. that's as high as I'll go. Yeah, it's not not it's not a four nine. It's not in there with Shawshank or Raiders or The Shining or Jaws or The Godfather. Absolutely not. That is not what this movie is. Now, a couple movies that we've been comparing it to: mm. American Gangster, King Good Kong, Fellow, yes. King Kong. <laughs> it's all, that all related. Uh, uh, no, but yeah, Kill. Okay, like uh, this is it's and and then we go to four eight. Is it more in that range or more in a Dead Poets, Forrest Gump, Truman Show, Goodwill Hunting? You know, I'd uh, say it probably like I think if we look at these, the four eights as opposed to the four eight fives, four eight fives has that stylistic flavor along with the story. Mm. There's something with it that that elevates it mm. to a different mm. realm mm. beyond mm. the story they give us. Because Totoro, Dead Poet Society, Forrest Gump, uh, Goodwill Hunting. I remember going. These are fantastic stories. But there's something preventing it from getting that extra bump. And, you know, Train Spotting gets that extra bump, probably the best example of it mm. for its stylistic choices. Uh, and I think The Wolf of Wall Street is worthy of that bump for its stylistic choices. I think Scorsese really does the shit. And, uh, I think it's probably every bit as good a film as, uh, say, say Goodfellas, which we also gave an eight, four, eight, five. Um, huh. Yeah, did not, I, uh, the high, highest of the month, if we, if we are going with four, eight, five. Um, it averages out to a four eight two, um, highest highest movie of the month yeah. in every category. Which uh, I guess that puts October at a four three three, which puts it only above. Um, what month is this? August. Um, puts it above April and January, so it's the yeah. fourth lowest. Out of what are we at? Ten? Yes, ten. So in sixth place um, out of the months, but that is, it's um, very close. Like the top five are are all really close together um, in ranks, anyways. Um, but this month it started out just kind of I don't know, not as strong as other months. Uh, just low four. Oh no, yeah, and I think uh, I think makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I think it was, uh, you know, the twenty tens are in- interesting because they are the more recent ones. There's less of this air of legendary status to them. Mm. Uh, you know, whenever it came to like the late nineties, even whenever we were covering like the Matrix, the Truman Show, Goodwill Hunting, there's there's an air of classicness to those. Mm. That uh, movies from ten years ago just don't have yet. Yeah. Uh, so maybe maybe there is something there with how objectively we can approach them. Mm. But I will also say, uh, Inception and Rise of the Planet of the Apes, I wouldn't say will ever be worthy of being called classics. You know, like they're they're solid, they're they're good movies to watch and entertaining. But like, uh, I think if we're if we're getting more in that classic territory, you're looking more at the Django Unchained, Wolf of Wall Street, eventually one day, sort of thing. Uh, Hmm. Well, yeah, it's, it's kind of, you know, when we see these actors, we're seeing them as they like pretty much look right now, you know, it's like, but when you watch a movie from the eighties or like you're watching Goodwill Hunting and you see young Leo and like young, young Matt Damon yeah, and, and like young, young Ben, ben Affleck. Affleck, you're like, oh wow, this is like, this is already a classic, you know, I'm seeing them, seeing them not in their they look so much older now. Like this has mm. to be, you know, like a classic sort of thing. So I mean, I think, um, I don't know out of like the movies that we recently covered. <clears throat> uh, I feel like avatar will go down. It's already kind of a classic, uh, like just it's top gross. Highest grossing movie um, of all time. It's going to be a classic. It's going to be there. I, I think Wolf of Wall Street will go down as just like a, you got to see Wolf of Wall Street, you know, like it, if you're throw like in the, say we're in the, in the forties or the fifties, you know? Yeah. And we're like, Oh, you want to, you want to throw back it, to a good old, that disgusting good old, to think about. Yeah. Good old tens flick. Like, Oh, we're, we're almost getting like, you know, whenever people used to say like the eighties or the seventies, you didn't have to say 19 in front of it. 
But like now we're getting to the point where we will be like the 20s, the 10s, the 30s, like they did in the 1910s. You know, like we're getting to that point to where like we won't have to say 2010s or 2020s, like which is just kind just of the tens. yeah, mind boggling. But I feel like, yeah, Wolf of Wall Street will go down. Probably Interstellar or, you know, next up will, I feel like is, is going to go down is quite the movie. But I was thinking. Yeah, I got a feeling. I got a feeling we're about to close out the year here. We got two months remaining in our 52 year journey through film, man. That's it. That That's is crazy. nine movies that we've got left to cover. So we are officially within the last decade. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and we're getting to the point where, and maybe King Kong or even Avatar kind of started this is we can do so much more with a movie now, just with the technology that we have. All of these movies up here, uh, you know, other than, than Star Wars or whatever is just like captured in camera I, or Blade Runner. You know, it's just like actors acting on a screen, on a real set, you know, uh, Everything is built here by hand, you know, like it's just people and a camera. Um, mm. But now we're into uh, we're in space or uh, we're in a completely made up world or, you know, we can do anything now. So it's it's kind of like the bar for a classic has to be set so much higher um, just because like you have to stimulate so much more mm. um, nowadays. But a movie like Wolf of Wall Street, there's no visual effect shots, really. I mean, I like the helicopter, you know, I guess. Um, but and like, the boat. yeah. Um, but like, it's it's mainly just a. I a, will not a, die sober. <laughs> yeah. Um, but mainly a, just a captured in, in camera movie, um, which is. It's relieving to see that it doesn't. We don't need a movie that has all the flashy, you know, visual effect shots or. Or made up. Hey, and we're only gonna we're only gonna get more and more into that, you know. I think, uh, you know, La La Land, mm. uh, the Big Short, Get Out, Blind Spotting, and I know Parasite is a lot of VFX, as yeah. you said, but like not as much as you'll be able to. Not tell. like meaningful vision. Not like reality breaking visual. It's just to make it look like Cleaner. reality. Yeah, yeah. like uh, or whatever, but. Yeah, Tick, Tick, Boom, Nomad Land. Like, these are a bunch of movies that are just hmm. captured in camera. Let's get it, you know. Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once, however, there's some pretty, there's some pretty intense shit. I'd in imagine movie. so. I still need to see that movie. Hey, man. now available digitally. You <gasps> can watch it from home. I just, I bought it yesterday. And, uh, yeah, bought it yesterday, watched that shit, and was like, yeah, this is just as good as I, I, I wanted it to be. Uh, bet. I I know what I'm watching tonight. Uh, fuck yeah, fuck yeah! I'm, I'm so happy for you to get to experience that for the first oh, time. Finally, I love that movie so much. Yes, okay. Uh, but yeah, so with that, we conclude this episode of the Penny Bloom Podcast, covering the good old, uh, mm. the good old Wolf of Wall Street. It's been a good October. Been a good October. Came to a four point three three out of five stars overall, which uh, you know might not be the best compared to. Uh, our other months, but it's still an 86% on Rotten mm. Tomatoes. So like, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's doing all right. It's doing all right. Uh, happy almost Halloween. Uh, happy almost yeah. Halloween. Everyone have a good Halloween. Stay safe out there. Uh, Dress up as Jordan Belfort and try to sell some penny stocks to people instead of, you know, turn Halloween into a door by door sales opportunity. Exactly. Instead of just exactly. Getting some candy. Flip the script on them. Yeah. They're not giving you candy. You're selling them <laughs> candy. Uh, Hey, it looks like uh, your supply is running short. It's pretty early on in the night. There's <laughs> going to be kids coming through all night. You interested in buying some candy? You know, I'll, bri- I'll provide it at a discount. You know, I got it for free. It's a profit. There you go. Yeah. Who who could have thought Halloween is, is just another business opportunity that we've, yes, we've missed in all the these years? Of, in the eyes of the wolf, mm-hmm. it always will be a sales opportunity. But uh, – with that, we conclude another great month in the 52-year journey through film and the Penny Bloom podcast. Next week marks the beginning of November. Uh, our, our first movie in November will be 2014's Interstellar, which, man, that's going to be a fun one to talk about. Never have we talked about that in full on its own on the podcast. However, I know it's one we both regard as one of our favorites of all time. 
So, so excited to talk about Interstellar next week. Cannot wait for that. Uh, if you would, head to patreon.com slash Corobloom where you'll find over 24 hours of exclusive content, full day of just nothing but us bullshitting, talking about other stuff that you don't hear every day here on the Penny Bloom podcast. Uh, just a whole bunch of shit out there. Um, very fun, very fun stuff. All that money goes back into making sure I can put this podcast on. Costs me money, and I don't make any off of it. Uh, in the very, very not Jordan Belfort style over here for the Penny Bloom podcast, unless it is over there on patreon.com slash Coro Bloom, C-O-R-O-B-L-O-O-M. Remember, head to Twitter, follow at Penny Bloom Pod, follow on Instagram at Penny Bloom Podcast. I was Colton Robertson, joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much, homie. Oh, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it is always a pleasure to have you. And remember, peace, love, and bloom. And enough of this shit will make you invincible, able to conquer the world, and eviscerate your enemies. I'm not talking about coke. I'm talking about money.